Welcome everyone, Simon here from the Wales of Wall Street, an energy web video for you guys today, EWT on the exchange. Uh, certainly a company or project that I've held in my portfolio for a number of years now. The energy sector massively excites me with the relation to blockchain and certainly AI integrations in the years to come, if not already now. Um, energy web has a presence kind of globally. Um, operates within certain elements of the energy sector. So we talk about peer-to-peer -peer trading uh, quite a lot on the channel in the past and to this day. Uh, we also got very interesting things around the EV car developments, of course, renewable energy. Um, we've got things like the uh, certifications, the regulations going on with the energy sector right now, where Energy Web is really accommodating this. So the idea or the ideology for those that don't know too much about blockchain and the crypto sphere uh, in regards to the energy sector or the energy sector in general, I mean, traditionally, we've always been in a centralized system similar to banking, and it's no different to the um, the energy sector. So we've had a lot of you know rising bills. We've had uh, discrepancies of quality of infrastructure. Um, we've obviously had the increase in renewable energy, or supposedly anyway. Um, and yeah, our bills keep getting higher for no real apparent reasons other than the argument that infrastructure costs money, even though our pipes are leaking, the um, sort of technology at the moment is decaying. So what are we actually paying for? Um, so the mechanism of blockchain, certainly the blockchain side of things, is ability to have more transparency and more validity in both the transactions utilizing the energy web chain, but also the um, aspects of you know how uh, energy can be traded or carbon credits can be traded, therefore potentially reducing costs to businesses as well as end users, um, all, all through this this. Um, opportunity that it has through the technology of blockchain of course faster transactions more efficient less cost um, and the ability as well for us to become what they call prosumers so this means that if i want to uh, ha sell my excess energy i mean some instances like some countries like here in the uk and some others you can actually sell it back to the grid but actually with this new kind of opportunity of a trading platform or the decentralization of it means that i could potentially send you energy or carbon credits of it at least um, that doesn't mean I'm sending you, you know, gas or electricity down the line. Of course, the the networks and everything will provide that. But the instigation of that is that um, the payment of it or the trade credit aspect of it can certainly be transferred. So we've got that element to it for sure. Um, what else is interesting with the utilization of blockchain and AI in particular as well is that grid flexibility. So there's some really interesting articles um, out there at the moment. Uh, we look at the um, things like this as an example. Um, because of the continuing development of renewable energies, this article in particular is quite interesting. It's, re it's suggesting that by 2040, uh, the world's energy mix will be represented of 35% or more of renewable energies. Um, so that's things like solar, wind, I guess to an extent uh, tidal as well. I haven't really seen too many. Um, tidal plants or anything like that um, but certainly from 2030 onwards this number is going to increase significantly um, so we have to adjust the supply and demand mechanism at the moment it's very manual so that's where the AI will come in for the real-time data the ability to sort of set that trend or predict the trends um, to be able to accommodate things and not have to have potential blackouts or surges in prices and things like this so there's some really good advantages there. Then you've got the interoperable aspect of, well, there's so many elements to energy, right? We've got electric vehicles, for example. We've got the RECs, all the certifications, which we talked about in the recent Power Ledger video. You've got carbon offsets. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, that trust and compliance aspect. Well, how do we know that we are getting a fair price? How do we know that it's not being manipulated or money is being wasted with leaks or poor infrastructure and things like that then you've got the automation perspective as well where kind of relating really to the recs or the certificates you've got the aspects of um you know smart contracts so that's really 
allowing the reduction in things like paperwork or admin overheads you know that comes at a cost it comes at a cost of time as well and these are always passed on to us as end users right so we can eliminate this and have the transparency to prove that all this has changed and is happening and then we start seeing reasonings as to well, why are our bills high and then we kind of assess as well a bit further that they shouldn't be so high and we can see that they shouldn't be as proof through blockchain so there's an argument down the road i'm sure we'll all have with the energy companies when this all kicks off um but certainly from the settlement perspective that's yeah the usual thing from blockchain the speed the efficiency the cost reduction all those things right so from the public's perspective or us our perspective okay we might be able to take the box of sustainability whether you believe in climate change or not is you know that's the wording you got the cost reduction element potentially for that so you know helping kind of lower those energy prices for us as consumers and empowerment i think that's a really strong word um you know the ability for us to be prosumers to have a bit more control a bit more assertiveness as a user um enabling cost savings uh potential income from that excess energy and uh to make it a bit of a fairer system so while we're talking about the scope of sort of 20 30 to 40 so we've talked about these increases here i just wanted to talk uh quickly about electric vehicles in general so here's just google for example of there's a multitude of articles and thought processes around this but i never really thought about it until a couple of years ago when i started learning more about blockchain its abilities and energy web in particular so when you've got smart ev cars the infrastructure of that of course is putting in things like charging points in garages or your home um etc etc but in the near future i'm probably more than likely have things like wireless charging as well that doesn't mean just sit in your car in a static position it also means the ability with the use of kind of like the smart uh meterage networks that are being built around the world all the time for the last however many years the ability of an ev car using that wireless energy charging aspect as you're driving through now every time this kind of thing happens or you're going along the routes or wherever your destination is and every time you're charging whether it be continuous in the future or statically when you park up outside your house or garages which mentioned they all require transactions um or transfer of an action so that's why blockchain is really important for that side of things so we can have this um element to uh what's been trying to achieve though next few years decarbonization goals you've got electrification of pretty much anything and everything that includes you know heating um reliable energy transport you name it decentralizing the grids uh, energy access that we've already talked about why is ewt crucial to all this well you've got the scalability tick box that one uh you've got the trust and traceability element you've got global standards which is very heavily orientated around um what's going on with the new regulations especially in the energy sector and you've got the integration of ai and iot on top of that so when we're looking at the energy infrastructure elements that can be benefited from the likes of energy web you're looking at renewables you're looking at electric vehicles you're looking at smart grids energy storage systems so like batteries for example um, and data management even uh, quite interesting here data centers run on clean energy as uh, so one of the last things probably Biden will be doing in his administration, utilizing artificial intelligence. He hasn't mentioned blockchain specifically here, but he's mentioning in in particular with this article is mentioning sorry, um, executive order to permit data centers on federal lands in a move aimed to bolstering clean energy and protecting national security during a boom in artificial intelligence. So all of these things require energy, guys, um, and that's where Energy Web comes in as an absolute powerhouse. Uh, this energy web x platform and the ewt token is very heavily orientated around ai right now um so you know that conversation everyone's seeing in the markets and the trends at the moment with ai it's is really aligning there so when you look at ewt for the future we talk about all those principles of ev cars i mean ev cars by the way guys just put this into perspective um i think when i look at the statistics it's quite phenomenal so currently i believe by 2030 there's about 245 million electric cars worldwide there's a representation of about 16 percent i think of all vehicles on the road by 2040 there are predictions out there uh suggesting that 
um, this number will significantly increase and take up 73% of that global capacity, that availability of cars in general around the world. So that's quite phenomenal, really, and even in, with vehicle fleets. So when we're looking at this perspective, as we mentioned about the charging aspect, there is another element to talk about, and that's digital identities. Now, this is really interesting when you talk about the car concept. So there's a few prongs to DIDs when it comes to EV cars. Um, you've got the element of the manufacturing, the creation of the car. So giving that car a unique identity or digital identity, that means any user along the way can see the, the credentials of that car, the make, the model, the battery, the capacity, the VIN. Yes, okay, we can see these very manually already, but to have it on blockchain is fully verified. Um, the traceability of the car, the sustainability of it, Every, anything and everything you would ever need to know. The other aspect of DIDs is the um, transactions in relation to charging stations. So instead of having to get your card or anything like that, when we have eventually got biometric payments and things like this, it'd be easier for us to uh, make those transactions automated and pretty much straightforward and, and immediate. Uh, the smart contract element to that will automate that transaction. Essentially, the payment is made using digital currency in this instance, EWT. So that's where you get some of the utility of the EWT token or the requirement of that moving forwards. So I'm suggesting that it's going to cost like one EWT exactly. It could be a fractionalization of that. The peer-to-peer -peer trading of that, where we just talked about earlier about being prosumers, this can also be relevant to the things like EV batteries. So when you're solar charging at home, you can sell the excess to other vehicles on the grid. It's mental, right? Um, so you've got the traceability, you've got the ability of being a prosumer, uh, you've got the verification elements, the, the transparency aspect of that, and you've also got potential data sharing. So kind of very different to you know, combustion engines, the ability of EV cars these days usually either have SIM cards in them or really powerful CPU units in them. You can have the car service history, the battery health, warranty information, everything you possibly need. If you think now, when we ask for service history, it's usually dictated to by the book that's in your in your logbook, right, here in the UK, probably different in the US with paperwork and stuff. But it's hard to sometimes find that history. So imagine if everything was on there. That could also dictate real time and more accurate pricing of your car rather than just manually thinking, well, you've got one piece of history or five pieces of history could dictate the cost of the car, right? So it's really interesting when you're talking about insurers, resell buyers, the trust mechanism in there is powerful, right? And you think of how much money is lost to fraudulent activity or misplaced costings based on insurance, based on buying and selling cars. It does make sense for the ability of blockchain to be integrated here to take take you know control of that and fix that problem. So I think this is really interesting, guys. I think one of the key things for me is for everyone out there who's new to crypto or wants to know more about the energy sector with blockchain, do research. Literally, you'll be absolutely mind blown by the prospect of what is coming, both from the technical aspect, but what we could potentially see with price points of energy related tokens. So we know the likes of um, you know, Hedera, for example, are heavily focused in this area. Um, we know Power Ledger, for example, are more dedicated as our energy web. And I think this is where it can really get exciting for these sort of next 10, 20, 30 years, as well as the IoT and the AI application kicking in with the likes of energy web as well. So it's a good point right now when we're talking about the EWT token to look at the chart. Let's see how much we've moved in these last couple of weeks. Well, actually, the answer is not much at all. So um, some thoughts around future pricing. I'm still kind of fixated in my mind that we should really be hitting that previous all time high in 2025, irrespective of whether the narrative is focused on the energy sector or not. However, in the future, I do anticipate this to be a hundred, maybe even two hundred dollar token. This is not financial advice, it's just my thoughts and opinions and based around certain specific elements of data that we try to capture when we're looking at the chart analysis over the last few years 
and taking into consideration the gigantic, albeit variable at the moment, ability of the energy sector, all the things we talked about with the utilization of blockchain on top of that. If we can take all those boxes over these coming years, there is no reason why those big numbers can't be hit. Let's come back down to earth for a minute, talk about where we are now. So we're very far off 100 and 200 dollars. So if all those narratives and things come in, it's going to be a great story. But at this moment in time, let's look and reflect on where we are today. So currently trading around 150 as of today's recording. Previous low down here on the 13th of November. I think actually that's the lowest it's ever been. Um, so we've kind of hit that bottom point. We've gone upwards. We've had a bit of a retracement. And we're now retesting these areas that we saw back in September last year. And more recently in November, towards the end of November, once we hit that rock bottom um, area. So if we can get some stability in this area, we can start looking more confidently, potentially, at some of these mi micro areas. I'm going to put that chart in so we've got a bit of a guideline. And what I mean by that is if we can get some sideways traction around this potent partial area, we can start then retesting some of these other areas. Now, I think if the 2025 bull run continues, or you know the cycle of it at least, we could see a pattern that instigates around sort of maybe March time, a bit of a dip. But after that, April kind of towards maybe um, September, October era before the RTGS system and the financial world kicks in properly with digitalization we're for another upward trend. That's where we could potentially start accelerating ourselves um, to previous all time highs with EWT. Now, it sounds a bit far fetched at the moment because if you pull it out, it looks so far away. But actually, if we can hit these data points, it's definitely achievable. Um, they also match up quite nicely together on some of these key areas. So these are definitely areas, if you're new to EWT and be buying around that $1, $1.50 mark, these are certain points in time where you may look to take some initial investments out um, or at least start getting excited about the strategy of hitting these higher ones up here. For me personally, I'm not interested in selling EWT um, until I see uh, at least at least towards that all-time high first and foremost so possibly a sell-off point around this sort of 18 19 dollar mark and then beyond that will be my incremental long-term values i.e 40 dollars um, up to the 61 79 and around the 87 respectively i'm not going to talk about those in depth now because there's absolutely no point we are way off that in all honesty these bigger numbers i would say yes it could be achievable for the all-time high this year these bigger ones, I could see this happening in the 2028 slash 2030 cycle, mainly because the infrastructure, the readiness of the energy sector with blockchain is not there yet at all. It's an educational phase, it's beginning stages, so there's plenty more to go. But for now, the RSIs on the bottom left hand here are very much in the middle. It's suggesting that we could go either way. So we just have to prepare ourselves for potential dips, maybe back down to this 124 mark, or we might accelerate and retest is 154, get some stability, push up to these next levels, maybe up towards the $2 again. But one thing for sure, aside from these intricate element of details in this short space of time, I think these are the perfect opportunities to look at a long-term plan for the likes of these kind of tokens. Uh, you may not expect gigantic gains this year, but it's certainly something to whether it's this year to accumulate or over the bear markets over the next few years. It's certainly something that everyone should be thinking about. doesn't have to be EWT either. Pretty much any of the ones that are related to the energy sector, I think this is going to be a huge narrative in the coming years. Um, so let's see what happens. But I'm really interested to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Um, I will jump back into an EWT video in the coming weeks obviously if anything drastic happens i'll try and get some youtube shorts out as well but that leaves me to say thanks for watching this video guys ewt is definitely one for the future let's see what it does this year i'm still excited either way thanks for watching we'll see you soon Bye bye